Where are we today, Tom? We are in the original garage building at Vent Haven, mm -hmm. the building that W.S. Berger always called his original Vent Haven. Mm -hmm. And today, what are we looking at? We're looking at Tom Coram's head. Well, it's not really Tom Coram's head. <laughs> it's a head that belonged to Tom Coram. But this has always been one of my favorite pieces at Vent Haven. Since the very first time I came here and saw this piece, I've been enthralled with it. I love this, this head stick that looks, looks incredibly complicated and the realism of the face. Uh, unfortunately, it, it's, it's got kind of a sad story behind it. Hmm. This head was used by the very famous British ventriloquist Tom Coram. He was a headliner in the 1930s. And when he passed away, his widow, Pat became a manager and agent and she handled an Irish ventriloquist by the name of Navin O'Reilly. So eventually Navin O'Reilly ended up with the head and at some point Mr. O'Reilly decided he'd sell the head to W.S. Berger and he'd give the proceeds to uh, Pat Corum, Tom Corum's widow. That was really nice. It was nice. Unfortunately, well the head arrived severely damaged even though it was packaged really well in a crate with Excelsior and W.S. Berger gave it the nickname the collector's headache. Well, he wanted to try and have the McElroys uh, possibly repair it, but that never happened, we don't think. If it did, they did a terrible job. No. <laughs> <laughs> the head was actually made in 1920 by a relatively obscure British figure maker named Ernest Crawford. And now, let's take it down and give it the old up close. All right, so we're going to have a close-up look at the head used by the British ventriloquist Tom Coram in the 1920s. Uh, again, uh, it, it arrived broken, and I'm sure W.S. was sick about it. You can see it's broken in a number of places. There are cracks here, here. There's a piece missing out of the back. There are pieces missing from the top of the head. There are cracks on this side of the head. Uh, and it's such a cool, intricate piece that I have no doubt that when W.S. opened the box, he was just heart sick. Uh, a collector's headache. <laughs> the veritable collector's headache. Yeah. People comment about all the strings on the neck stick, so tell me a little bit about that. Well, it's interesting because upon examination, it appears that these odd pieces here are levers, much like Ken Spencer used on, his, on some of his figures. Mm -hmm. And the way they're made in such a way that it operates the movement, but you can, it, it reaches a certain point where if you snap it downward, it locks the movement in place. So in other words, you could have the ears come out and then pop it down and the ears would stay out. And, and I think that's what these are for, uh, because there are also there are traditional levers uh, in different places. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the back of the head. Mm -hmm. This head has mostly the same types of movements that the figures now have. A moving mouth, of course, side to side eyes, eyebrows, flapping ears. Uh, it has winkers, although they refer to it as a squinting feature. Uh, and I think the simple reason for that is that these winkers don't really close all the way, so it was more of a squint when they would close. There's also some tubing back here with a splitter, so uh, either he's a smoker or a crier or both. And I'm not sure if he's a crier. There are two little holes here on the outside, but I can't tell if those are holes from the tubing or if that's part of the mechanism where the, the eyelid is hinged. One thing I think is really neat about this figure is that he's very realistic. The features are in proportion and the paint around the eyes, it looks like the um, it's, there have been grooves cut in, but it's actually shadow in the paint. Yeah, it looks like smile lines, but you can mm -hmm. look up close here and that's actually the, the face is flat. And, and that really was very much the style of the time in Great Britain. The, the figures were very realistic. Uh, you'll notice the eyes are in proportion with the rest of the face like a human's face whereas the puppets we use over here tend to have much larger eyes and they're more cartoony more puppety mm -hmm. so inside the head there is some pasted information and there is a quote here that says every man's life work ought to be a masterpiece unfortunately this masterpiece was damaged thank you so much for watching if there's something you'd like to see behind the scenes, email Lisa at curator at benthaven.org.